good afternoon students today we will discuss about the file management so till now we have discussed about the transaction management normalization all these things so now we will start about the file management file management mainly talks about how we are physically storing the data okay so we, as we see the database is a collection of files because if we see that we have a database which is a collection of tables and the table is a collection of records and record is a collection of fields okay so here we will talk how we are storing it now how we are storing it is we have a database management system which will take care about how to retrieve the data and in operating system whenever we are retrieving a file suppose in a, we are re retrieving a video from the operating system whereas if we are re retrieving a video we will retrieve the entire video whereas in a database if we are retrieving we will retrieve a only record or a few records we will retrieve we will not retrieve the entire table sometimes so that's why database management system will take the help of the operating system but it will not depend on operating system completely it will take the help of the operating system so database management system will have the specific codes how to fetch the data effectively so as i said earlier database is a collection of files and each file is a collection of records and record is a sequence of fields so we have a database okay which is a collection of files and the files is a collection of records and records is a collection of fields so everything we know the records we will store in terms of blocks in our operating system also in the main memory we have a specific blocks in cache memory we have lines and we have in the secondary memory we have the pages in the virtual management virtual memory concept so here we have the blocks so how we are storing the records and how to effectively store the records all these things we will study in the file management concept so we will discuss about the how these blocks are stored and how the records are stored in the memory okay so now we will discuss about the strategy for storing the records in a block because a block will consists of collection of records okay so as i said earlier file is a collection of records so we have a file which will be stored in a, now if i have a one file which will be divided into blocks block 1 block 2 block 3 so on now in each block we will have set of records this may be record 1, record 2, like that we will have a set of records. So we will discuss about how this is effectively storing. So we have two strategies for storing records in a block. One is spanned strategy. One is the spanned strategy for storing records in a block. And second one is unspanned strategy so we have two strategies for storing records in a block one is spanned strategy and another one is unspanned strategy so now in this video we will discuss about what is a spanned strategy and what are the advantages of spanned strategy and what are the disadvantages of spanned strategy similarly we will discuss about what is an unspanned strategy what are the advantages of it and what are the disadvantages so first we will discuss about the spanning strategy, how the records will be stored in a block. Okay. Spanning strategy. So in the spanning strategy, okay, before discussing about the spanning strategy, let me discuss what is a blocking factor. Because before discussing about the spanning strategy, I need to discuss about what is a blocking factor. Blocking factor will tell us how many or average number of average number of records stored in a block okay blocking factor will tell me because we are saying that a block is collection of records in a block we have a set of records 
so blocking factor will tell me average number of records in a block okay how many records average i can keep in a block will be identified with the help of blocking factor now come to the spanish strategy of storing the records in a block now as i said we have a records now let's take that i have a block okay which capacity is 520 mb let's take for understanding purpose let's take that i have 520 mb of a block one block size is 520 mb okay so now each record is 100 mb let's take that i have one record size is 1 mb so how many records i can keep i can keep record 1 i can keep record 2 i can keep record 3 i can keep record 4 i can keep record 5 five records i can keep because I have five records which is of 500 MB, so remaining 20 MB will be there. Okay, are you able to understand it or not? We have a block of size 520 MB, and each record size is 100 MB. So in 520 MB, I can keep five records, and 20 MB will be there. Now coming to the span strategy, it will not waste even this 20 MB. It will keep the record six. In record six, we have. 100 MB size file is there. Record six, which is a 100 MB. So what it will do is that in the block one, it will keep the first 20 byte, 20 MB of the record six will be kept, and then the remaining 80 MB will be kept in block two. Are you able to understand it or not? So, if we have a space is there in a spanned strategy, we will keep the record, some part of the record in block one, and another some remaining part we will keep it in the block two. Then you can ask me what is the advantage? What is the advantage is that we are not wasting the memory. If we would not keep the part of the record six here, then twenty MB we will be wasted to avoid the wastage of memory. They have gone for the span strategy. In span strategy, we have the 20 MB of memory where we can keep the record six. Some part of the record six we will keep here, and the remaining part we will keep in the block two. Then you can ask me what is the drawback of sorry, what is the drawback of the span strategy? The drawback of the span strategy is if I want to access the record six, if I want to access the record six. how many blocks i have to access i have to access the block 1 and also i have to access the block 2 so the drawback of the span strategy is the number of block access will be more but the advantage is that it avoids the memory wastage now you can ask me where this span strategy will be useful the span strategy will be useful for us when the records are of different sizes when their record sizes are not uniform then we will go for the span strategy so i hope everyone has understood what is a span strategy now let me go for the unspan strategy unspan strategy in unspan strategy the same one if we have 520 mb of block size and the record size is the block size is 520 mb and the record size is 100 mb let's take that so record 1 will be kept record size is 100 mb now record 2 i can keep in record 3 record 4 record 5 and the 20 mb will be there okay so now where i will keep the record 6 i will not keep the record 6 here part of in span strategy we kept the part of the Record six here, and the remaining part we have kept in the block two. Whereas in unspan strategy, we will leave this space for free, and then we will keep the record six in block number two. Okay. So what is the drawback? The drawback is that we are wasting the memory. And what is the advantage? The number of block access are reduced because if I want to access any particular record, I can access single block only. Suppose if I want to access Record number five. I have to access only block number one. If I want to access the record number six, I will access the block number two. So the advantage is that the number of block access is less, but the drawback is that we are wasting the memory. Now, where this unspan strategy will be useful is when the record size are fixed. When the record size are fixed, we will go for the unspan strategy. 
So I hope you have understood the introduction related to the file management. We will discuss about the organization of records in a file. We can organize the records in two ways. One is the ordered file organization and second one is unordered file organization. What is on the ordered file organization means if the, all the records are in the sorted order, all because the records we will store in a file, okay, if all the records are ordered in a sorted order, then we will say that it is an ordered file organization. So, in this one, the records are records are stored in ordered way, meaning or I can say that in sorted order. Are stored in sorted order. Whereas in unordered file organization, the records are stored in unsorted order. Okay, the records are stored in unsorted order, then we will call it as an unordered file organization. Now come to the ordered file organization. We will discuss what are the advantages of ordered file organization and what are the drawbacks of ordered file organization. Similarly, the advantages and disadvantages of unordered file organization. So, as we discussed earlier, the ordered file organization will have the records are stored in the sorted order. So, we will discuss about ordered file organization, the drawbacks and advantages. If all the records in a field, in a file, sorry, not in a field, it is on a, in a file, if all the records are stored in sorted order, record 1, record 2, record 3, so on, record n, if all the records are stored in the sorted order, what is the advantage? The advantage is searching will be easy because if all the files are ordered in the sorted order, I can apply binary search. Because the searching will be easy because I can apply on a if all the numbers are in the sorted order, we already discussed it, but we can apply binary search. So I know I think everyone knows it. What is the binary search and how it will work? But I will not discuss about the binary search if it all these things we will not discuss about the binary search. But if the files are stored in the or sorry, in, if all the records are stored in the sorted order, we can apply the binary search. And I think everyone know what is the average time complexity of the binary search. The average time complexity of the binary search is log n base 2. So if I want to, so it will have log n base 2 if I want to access any record in the ordered file. So the average time complexity is log n base 2 as we are applying the binary search. Then what is the drawback? So you are telling the advantage, the advantage is by research we can apply log and base to the average access time. What is the drawback? The drawback is that if I want to insert any record, suppose that state that here 100 records are there. If I want to insert some 99 record, like that R1, R2, Rn, so till R98 is there, then R100 is there. Now if I want to insert R99, then I have to swap them, sorry, if I have to shift them to the next position and I have to insert the R99. So the insertion is difficult in the ordered file organization. So the advantage is that the access time is less, the disadvantage is insertion is difficult. So now we will discuss about the unordered file organization. As I said earlier, in unordered file organization, the records are not stored in sorted order. They will be stored in unsorted order. So, any record can be there anywhere. Here R100 can be there, here R76 will be there, it can be R75 or here R1. Some any order can be there or it can be R1000. Like that any record, these records are not stored in a sorted order. They are stored in unsorted order. Now, if they are stored in unsorted order, what is the searching algorithm we can apply? We can apply the linear search. If it is a linear search, I can apply the linear search. If, the, if I am applying the linear search, the average time complexity is n by 2. Okay, if I want to search any record, I have to go for an average of n by 2. If 100 records are there, an average I have to go for 50 record access. Then what is the advantage is that the advantage is that we can insert the any record easily because they are not stored in sorted. If I want to insert R99, I can insert at the end because they are not sorted order. 
So in this video we have discussed about how the records are stored in a file. We have two mechanisms. One is the ordered file organization and second one is unordered file organization. Okay. Thank you so much.